All right, aloha kako. Welcome and good evening, everyone. My name is James Hustis. I'm the president of the Waimea Community Association. Thank you to those joining us online tonight for our regular monthly Waimea Community Association town meeting. Tonight, so we'll be hearing important community updates and information about crucial infrastructure projects here in our community. We are grateful to be joined by our executive members, elected officials, and community leaders representing the Waimea area, our county, and our state. I encourage you to follow, like, and subscribe to the Waimea Community Association on our social accounts. Uh, you may also find relevant information and resources on our website, waimeatown.org. We do strive to keep our accounts active and up to date. At this point, I would like to recognize the WCA board members, our Vice President, Mary Beth Lechek, our Treasurer, Jeremy Madrid, and our Secretary, Nancy Carr Smith, and of course, our Directors, Michael Donnelly, Riley Smith, Lonnie Olson Chong, David Greenwell, and Patty Cook. And on behalf of the Waimea Community Association Board, we are grateful for the support shown by you, the community, to hold virtual town meetings. Uh, thank you all for your interest in joining us for our past meetings and for viewing and sharing these recordings even. Uh, you're welcome to revisit and rewatch these videos up on our Facebook page or even up on our YouTube channel. The Waimea Community Association is a nonprofit organization that strives to promote open participation by all of the Waimea community, develop leadership, and support the smart growth of the region. If you'd like to support the work we have done and help continue our effort in connecting with our community, you're more than welcome to donate and join as a member. If this is something that interests you and you would like to receive more information, please don't hesitate and email us at Waimea Community Association at gmail.com or even visit our website, waimeatown.org to download a membership form. You're welcome to mail these forms or you can uh, submit an online form as well. Um, let's see, so your contributions and your membership allow us to reach out and connect with the community, particularly in this setting and really support the work that WCA has done over the past 60 years. Um, this evening, we'll begin everything with a community policing update from our South Kuala District Police Captain and our officers. We'll then spend a little time discussing our current COVID-19 situation and some of the changes that are happening to our county rules. Following, we will spotlight our nonprofit of the month and spend some time with two of our Waimea council members. And for the main portion of tonight's meeting, we will delve into state highway projects that will improve the safety of our roads here in Waimea and around the island. And we also hope to touch on the recent county redistricting effort, uh, what this means for our community, and then some of our plans for WCA in the months ahead. This evening, we are grateful to present you with a full and informative agenda, and we've allocated some time to share your questions with our presenters. Um, we do appreciate the community members that have sent in questions ahead of time, and we will also do our best to capture some of your live questions for this portion at the end of the meeting. Please use the Facebook chat to pose your live questions and we will do our best to share them. Uh, thanks to our WCA board members, Patty Cook and Riley Smith for joining me this evening and presenting these questions. So without further ado, and at this time, I would like to welcome in and welcome back Captain Evangelista and our community policing officers, Justin Cabantin and Ansel Robinson to share with us a few policing updates for the community. Mahalo, Captain and officers. Thanks for joining us. Good evening, everybody. Hi, thanks, James. James. Uh, why All right, we go I'll ahead get us start started. Uh, we come... okay, go ahead. Okay, I'll get us started. Okay, so um, just a couple announcements before we get going. Um, like the uh, representative Tarnas said, coffee with a cup. Um, that was uh, we had fun. It was uh, just done last week. Our new um, our new date is going to be March 28th. It's a Monday, so we're going to be doing coffee with a cup again at Starbucks in Waimea. So please let everyone know. I'll be sending out the new March newsletter soon in a few days. So watch your inbox for that. And one thing I just wanted to touch on uh, is spring break coming up in March. Kids are going to be out of school. We're going to have beach days. Um, we just want to let the public know. You know, please practice safety, safe driving. Um, please don't use your cell phone while driving. And um, again, um, please don't drink and drive. But I'm going to start off with the crime trends report. Uh, for the month of February, uh, Salkohala had three assault um, uh, cases. Uh, we had also had three burglaries. We had uh, no criminal property damage reports. 
We did, however, have nine drug, um, nine drug cases initiated. A lot of them um, were from uh, tra in traffic stops. So our patrol officers are out there on the roads um, during traffic stops, initiating drug cases from their observations. Uh, we didn't have any robberies. We did have seven theft cases for the District of South Koala for the month of February. Uh, we did have one UCPV case. Um, we didn't have any um, unauthorized entry into a motor vehicle case, and we did have seven uh, major incidents for South Koala for the month of February. And that is uh, our crime uh, crime report for South Koala in a, in a nutshell, and I'll just pass it over to Officer Robinson. He'll give you a good uh, crime uh, traffic trends. All right. So uh, South Koala officers issued 739 office, uh, sorry, uh, citations. Um, of those citations, uh, 214 were for, for speeding, 104 for moving, 51 for seat belts, five child restraints, 226 regulatory, uh, 76 unsafe, 54 device, and we had six OVUII or DUI arrests. Um, additionally, as far as traffic fatalities go, uh, there were a total of seven traffic casualties, but we're happy to report that there were no fatalities for the month. Um, and yeah, that's all I got. I'll turn it over to Captain Evangelista. Hey, thank you, guys. Um, so like Officer Robinson mentioned, um, we had uh, seven. Actually, I think the, we got to revise our total. I think I found one more major traffic crash. A uh, major traffic crash is any crash which involves $3,000 or more in damage or any injury. Um, so out of the eight major crashes we had in our huge district with all of our traffic, uh, we're happy to report that only three of them involved any type of injury, um, which, is, which is great. The, the less injuries, the better. And then two, two of the accidents were major accidents just by virtue of the fact that they involve government vehicles. So in, in that case, it doesn't matter what kind of damage is done. As long as it's a government vehicle, it'll be classified as a major traffic crash. Um, so all in all, not bad numbers, uh, a little bit of an, of an improvement over last month. Um, and we hope to keep that trend going with uh, our enforcement efforts and education efforts. Um, and as far as our personnel, it's been in the news a lot that police departments everywhere are shorthanded, and we're no different in South Kohala. Out of the 37 uh, authorized positions we have for law enforcement officers, uh, we actually have 31 assigned. Um, so we have some vacancies. Uh, but this recruit class that's gonna be graduating next month or not graduating, but hitting the road next month, we hope to fill some of those vacancies. But uh, what it means is recruitment must be ongoing for our department. Um, so if you know of anyone or can think of anyone that might be interested or um, they, they might wanna give this a try, it's a really great profession. It's provided me and all of the officers I know with a stable, steady career with good benefits um, and it is rewarding. There's a lot of job satisfaction as well. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and post a link to the county, uh, Hawaii County's um, recruitment site and people, if they're interested, they can watch there for when the police officer recruitment opens. They should go ahead and build their profile already so that they're ready to apply when the recruitment opens. Um, and that's it. Thanks folks, thanks for having us. Thank you, Thank you Captain. Everyone. Thank you, officers, Officer Cabante and Officer Robinson. Appreciate you being out here this evening. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate all the work that you do to support our community. So thank you so much for joining us for our monthly meetings. Good to see you all. Thank you. All right, so I'll move along here. And, and you know, with policies changing around COVID guidance uh, here at home and really across the country, we're seeing, uh, we really still must remain thoughtful and diligent. Um, our healthcare workers remain steadfast. They've been through quite a bit in these past few months. And tonight we're grateful to be joined by Carmela Rice, the Chief Nurse Executive of Kohala Hospital to give us a brief COVID-19 update and really to share some insight. Uh, Mahalo Carmela, thank you for joining us and taking the time this evening. 
Thank you for having me. So uh, just before I start giving you information on what we've been doing at Kohala, I just want to tell you about a year and a half before um, COVID hit all of us in our lives, um, I decided to be uh, take an extra hat, um, not only chief nurse executive, but I said, hey, I can do infection control. How hard is that? <laughs> and then COVID-19 hit. Um, I do want to say that our, uh, I'm very proud of how our hospital responded. We responded very quickly, um, looking at employee health, um, looked at our physical plant, whatever we had to do um, to make it safe, not on, only for the community, but for our, also for our nurses and, and um, our staff, and um, kept really a uh, tight watch on what CDC and Department of Health guidelines, uh, whatever was coming out, but also looking at what was happening in the community. Um, and uh, we did a lot of education and communication um, with the staff, but also with, with the community and what was going on. Um, we've had, we followed very strict guidelines um, as uh, in employee health, um, again, not only to protect our kapunas um, that live in Kohala Hospital, because we have both long-term care, critical access, and also the ER, but also to protect our resource, which is the most valuable resource of all is, is our staff. And so um, we did a lot of education on how to um, prevent um, uh, the spread of COVID, not only in the hospital, but also in our homes. Um, you know, when we interact with, with people at home or with our friends um, and, you know, talking a lot about parties and how to have safe parties <laughs> and gatherings, which is a big thing in Hawaii, you know. Um, and so um, some of the, the things we did um, for the community was um, we started a, um, a vaccination program um, and worked with um, Kona Hospital um, that and they helped us with um, providing um, the uh, vaccination. Uh, we, we used Pfizer at the time, and we were able to, um, including our staff, we were able to um, provide um, COVID vaccination for under less than the, just under a thousand people. So um, a thousand people got vaccinated very early on back in. Um, we started back in, let's see, um, December of 2020. So with all of that and all of the things we put in place, one of the other things we did was, and this is just one of the things we did, but which was very important. Um, we had one negative pressure room in the ER and we went from one to eight, eight negative pressure rooms. So four in the ER and four in the long-term care um, um, side of the hospital. And that's, that's helped a lot. So our goal was always to protect the kapunas um, in, in our um, facility, but also in our community and, and also our community in general. Um, so since the start of COVID, that's all that, like we're what, two, two plus years um, um, into COVID, we've had zero, non, no infectious infections in house of COVID. Um, regarding our patients. And we're very proud of that. Thanks, Patty. We're very, very proud of that. Um, it's been a challenge. Um, and um, again, a lot of teamwork um, with not only with the hospital itself, but with the community. So um, that's about it on my report. <laughs> we're very, very happy to, again, have um, the community support. Thank you, Carmela. It's, it's really good to have you on here and really connect with um, our other residents and different communities as well. We've been really leaning on uh, the hospital here in Waimea, but it's really good to reach out and reach out to some of these other uh, healthcare professionals and workers uh, across the district as well. And really, uh, we know we're all big one, big Ohana here. So it's really good to hear from you and the work that you've been doing in North Kohala. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, James. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and, you know, this really does continue to be our kuleana. Um, we're still going to be living with COVID here for, for the foreseeable future, and it, it really remains with us here. Uh, so it, it really is on a lot of us to, to really stay at home if you're really feeling under the weather. 
wear your masks, wear and when appropriate. Uh, get tested if you suspect exposure and also consider getting vaccinated if you haven't had the chance to do so yet. Uh, these are all opportunities for you out there. So, and I, you know, if there, if any questions, I do always encourage you to visit hawaiicovid19.com, which is the state COVID-19 portal, or the county portal, which is hawaiicounty.gov slash coronavirus. Uh, once again, mahalo, Carmela, to you and your colleagues for all that you're doing for our communities. Mahalo. Thank you. Um, some of our state guidelines still remain in effect, uh, while others are changing in the weeks ahead. And each of our counties are also undergoing some revisions to their policies. And really to speak further on some of these recent changes and Hawaii County guidelines, this evening we are joined by Stephen Bader, the Executive Assistant to Mayor Roth. Welcome, Steve. Uh, thank you for joining us and sharing some of these updates and news with the community here. Yeah, nice, uh, nice to join you this evening. Sorry, I had a little issues with my computer, so I had to call in instead of uh, Zoom in, but I'm uh, glad to join you and uh, you know talk through uh, the recent changes. I think the the main uh, thing on the county level is that uh, on the 28th uh, Monday we had lifted all of our county restrictions, and that that really was along the lines of uh, indoor and outdoor numbers. So there's no restrictions as far as social gatherings indoors or outdoors. Uh, we um, had a process by which people could uh, apply for special uh, exemptions, if you had a large gathering, whether that be at the, the, the resorts, the hotels, or or um, a family gathering, and uh, there was a process to that. I think we approved over 1,500 requests, so we didn't turn very many down. We just worked with people as they were um, presenting their their uh, situation to us and try to make sure it was safe. But we that process is now no longer in place. And there's no uh, capacity restrictions with uh, restaurant bars and other businesses, uh, gyms, uh, churches, everything is, is sort of back to normal that way. The exception is that the governor's proclamation, which is which covers um, indoor masking, is one of its big issues. And uh, the safe travels program remains in effect until March 25th. And uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen with safe travel. I, I guess he did make an announcement that they're going to take safe travels down effective on the 26th. Uh, but there may be some restrictions with international travel that will stay in place. Uh, other than that, uh, that will go away. It's not clear whether or not they may keep the indoor masking, um, uh, continue indoor masking. And, and uh, I think the governor's office working with Department of Health, uh, they have to deal with that issue working with the schools because we have one, you know, one single school system and there has to be some coordination between, uh, you know, how he deals with that. So that may end up uh, going away on the 20, uh, 26. We're not sure about that, or it may stay in place. And uh, eventually, the, you know, I, I guess you could say transition out, but um, there is really very little restrictions uh, throughout our county, except for the indoor um, mask mandates. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate you being here and sharing those updates with us and uh, keeping us surprised of the, the changes and the happenings there at the county. Patty, do you have a question on something there? Yeah, Steve, would you be able to say something about um, continued COVID testing availability? Sure. So the, the COVID testing is going, also going to be ramping down because we just don't have the demand. And also we were, uh, we had the assistance of the National Guard and, and that also is uh, going away at the end of the month. So, but for this month, uh, um, there is going to be testing available, commu free community testing available still on Saturdays, not this Saturday, but I think the next, uh, few Saturdays uh, at Waimea District Park. And there is a full schedule. You can find it on the county's uh, COVID uh, website. County of Hawaii will have a, a, a pretty full schedule around uh, the island where you can get testing. 
Uh, the a schedule hasn't been put in place for April yet. It's going to be a, a smaller schedule for sure. And we're trying to see if we can get uh, some of the providers uh, to make themselves more available that way. But with, with uh, home tests that people have been ordering uh, and I think over the counter that's becoming a little bit more available and cheaper, I think it's kind of changes, changing the dynamic. Uh, one thing I wanted to say about uh, sort of this downshifting is that we have been getting a lot of calls from uh, business owners who have been concerned that, uh, that they're feeling a little pressure uh, to open up. In other words, if they were doing takeout only or they had limited seating, that they're feeling some pressure from their customers uh, to be able to open up 100% now that the restrictions are off. And, and actually, you know, it's, we've been telling them it's their call. And, and a lot of folks are having issues with staffing. Um, in some cases, some of these businesses say they're, uh, they're, they're still concerned about safety of their own employees as well as customers. And so there's really no push as far as from the county side to try to get them to open immediately. That is definitely their call. Um, there's, there, the other issue we're seeing is that uh, we, the county doesn't have the authority to take off the mask mandates, but we have a lot of folks who are anti-mask that are showing up at businesses saying that uh, around the county saying that, you know, the restrictions are off and uh, you know, harassing, almost harassing businesses. And so that that's something. We've even had people showing up in the, our county offices here, you know, demanding that we, we take down that mandate. So we're, we're, we're getting a lot of that right now. And, um, you know, we don't have a lot of control over what the governor decides to do with that. But uh, definitely uh, businesses, if they're transitioning, if it's if it's a theater performances like Kahilu, you know, I think they're going up to 100%, but they were set to be at 50% with some of their performances and kind of they've, um, you know, they have the ability to go 100%. There are other, there are other venues that are kind of easing into it because they already had plans. Uh, so what we wanted to let everybody know, and you can kind of pass this around, is that there is no pressure. You know, uh, it's really up to each individual uh, business how they want to handle this transitionary period. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate you supporting our businesses and and you know welcoming them and and uh, encouraging them to do what they feel is best for themselves and and the community. So thank you. Um, wonderful. Uh, anything else, Steve? No, that's it. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank, thank you so you much for the invitation. Absolutely, it's great to have you on here and really uh, represent the county here and 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 highlight some of the changes that are happening here across the state. So thank you so much for being here with us this evening. Mahalo to you. And of course, thank you to the mayor. Tomorrow. Thank you so much. Aloha. Um, aloha. Let's see. So for the month of March, the Waimea Community Association will be spotlighting Mala Ai as our nonprofit of the month. And so tonight we are joined by the executive director of Mala Ai, the culinary garden of Waimea Middle School, uh, Zoe Cosmas. Um, Mala Ai has also reached an amazing milestone. So welcome Zoe and congratulations. Thank you so much now that I'm off mute. Um, yeah, and thank you for having us here today. We are super excited to be celebrating our 17th year as an organization, uh, which is a great accomplishment. And it's thanks to many of the people that are here on this call and many of the hands in the community that have helped us get there. So just deep bows of gratitude to everyone for helping us get to where we are. And I thought to really share about the gardening, I would pass it off to our students who helped create this coast to coast video last year. Um, our garden was one of six that were chosen from across the country to be featured in this national event. Um, this national event was endorsed by Tom Vilsack and it was presented to the White House. So it was a really great opportunity. It was a live event that was shown to students and classrooms all across the country. And uh, our students really had a big role in directing and deciding what they wanted the video to look like. So yeah, I think I'll just pass it off to James to set that up for us. Okay, here we go. Thanks, Zoe. Yeah. Ano 
Aloha, or Junin Kowahi Ko'inoa, I have Makapapa Eiva. What I just said is welcome and hi. My name is Junin Kowahi and I am a ninth grader. We are here at Malai Garden. This is basically where I spent the three best years of my life at Waimea Middle School. Malai translates to food garden and it is a big part of what we do here, which is to grow, harvest, and eat the delicious food. Waimea Middle School, or Malai Garden, is located in the northern part of the Big Island, which is surrounded by mountains, hills, and ranch land, with the ocean just down the hill. Before we enter the garden, we usually oli or chant. And the chant that we do is Malana Mai Kau, which basically talks about all the different parts or places on Hawaii Island. The reason as to why we chant is because not only to ask for permission, but to also get us into the mindset of focusing and bringing the knowledge of what we know into the garden. When I chant, I feel good and connected and present. Just remember this is a time for reflection and to really uh, let yourself relax. One activity we do in the garden is two minutes of kilo. And kilo basically means to observe. This is a silent time where we use our senses to not only observe ourselves, but also observe our surroundings. During Kilo, I feel like relaxed and like all my worries are gone. I can hear the birds, I can hear the wind, I can hear everything. You take two minutes and then like you breathe in and out. You just think of your day, how it went, and what you're feeling right now. I really like doing two minutes. It's like nice to just to sit down and like observe your surroundings and how things grown or changed. Kilo is something you can do all by yourself. Just make sure you stay quiet and to use all of your senses. One very important plant that we grow in our garden is kalo, or taro. Here in Hawaii, this crop has a very special significance that connects us to where we live. We regard this plant as our big brother and give it the name haloa, the long breath of life. In sixth grade, our kumu, or teacher, Lanakila, comes to the garden and shares the Hawaiian creation story with us. We learned that Haloa is a sacred plant that grew out of the earth and shares the same parents as mankind. Haloa is born first, so here's our elder brother. We must take care of this plant like it takes care of us by giving us food and life. You can eat the leaves, the stem, and the corm. Oh, I'm not scared of ladders. Of course, everyone loves to harvest, cook, and eat. Eating food in the garden is a great time to try new things and to eat fresh, healthy, and delicious meals. The things we cook are so ono, delicious. Uh, we made crispy kalo with herbs. Cooking is my favorite activity because I like to um, eat what I grow. Now with COVID, we have to be at a desk at home by ourselves for hours on end. So coming to the garden is just so great to be able to socialize and be with friends and teachers and everyone. We practice Hawaiian culture in the garden um, to really perpetuate it and to like, you know, educate students so it doesn't like die off. I love plants. I love everything in nature. The plants here are amazing. The people here are amazing as well. And it's just an amazing place overall. Mahalo for joining us. And if you have the time, make sure to try and do your two minute kilo at home. Aloha from Malahai on the Big Island of Hawaii. Hey, it's ours. And then if you could go to the next slide, perfect. So I love that video. The kids were so adorable making that. Um, and yeah, the last thing that I'll just kind of say short on time, but um, again, gratitude to the teachers and administrators that at Waimea Middle School that have let us um, be so successful and have been willing to collaborate with us over the years. Uh, it takes effort on their part as well. And we're just so grateful that they like working with us and we've been making this partnership over the years. 
Um, we're growing, which is really exciting. In 2019, we adopted the Hawaii Island School Garden Network. It's officially one of our programs. And so we're increasing our support to teachers and gardens across the island. Uh, there's currently 67 gardens out of our, I think about 75 schools. So we're really working hard to make everyone um, as successful as us. And I'll drop some links into our chat as well if you guys wanna learn more about the farm to school movement um, across our whole state, because we're part of a statewide HUI as well. And then lastly, just invite you all to get involved. Uh, we have lots of opportunities to um, be a volunteer. And then of course we uh, rely on community donations and your support. That's why we've been able to make it for so long and why we can provide um, good benefits and salaries to our people and our employees. And so if you're willing or able to donate, um, I'll drop the link into the chat and Facebook. Um, or if you wanna be a volunteer, please sign up. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is that we are actually working on building our board of directors. So if anybody is interested in joining a like-minded um, team to make this even better, uh, you can email me, zoe at malai.org. We're really looking for people that have experience in nonprofit uh, administration organizations and then any kind of experience on board. So that's kind of all I have to say. I'm really grateful that you guys gave me the opportunity to be here today and that you're highlighting us for this month. Um, February was our birthday. So uh, yeah, just really grateful again for the opportunity and to be part of this community that has supported us for so long. So mahalo nui loa. Mahalo nui Zoe. Thank you so much. It's great to have you on here and really uh, showcase Mala Ai and what it's done for our community here. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm really um, really showcasing that here. So thank you. Uh, and once again, if you are interested in learning more about Malai, the work being done right here in our community by our community and ways to support their efforts, please visit malai.org and then we'll make sure that those links are uh, put in the Facebook chat. So thanks again, Zoe. Great to have you on here. Uh, just wanted to talk just briefly about a couple other announcements before we move on here. And I'll just share my screen on a couple other little uh, things that have popped up here in the community. Um, first of all, there's a, you can see it on your screen, you can even scan with a QR code on, the, on, the, on your screen there, but there is a, a Medicare 101 webinar happening uh, Wednesday, March 16th uh, via Zoom. Uh, so if you're looking to learn more about the benefits that are provided by Medicare, uh, this is being put on by Queens North White Community Hospital as well as uh, other other entities there too. So if you're looking for some information about that, the information's right there on your screen. Uh, thank you. So the next one I wanted to share with you, and you may have been, may have been hearing some things happening um, that sound a little interesting, but there are some PTA uh, events going on and training happening, convoy, hunting advisory. So this is something that is up on the, uh, uh, WCA Facebook page, and it's out there for you as well. But there are some uh, training, there's some training happening, artillery training, you may have been hearing a couple things in the community. Uh, there is a phone number on uh, this, this slide if you have any concerns or need to reach out to someone about noise related issues. So the phone number there is at the bottom 808-656-3487. And the next one is about some more of our things that are happening in the community here. And some of these events have already passed, but this is a little slide that really supports our Girl Scout troops, uh, Troop 203. And if you're looking for something tasty uh, and sweet, of course, uh, please support our Girl Scouts. Uh, there are a couple of events coming up uh, where you can find them. Uh, the next one looks like it's at, at Foodland here in Waimea uh, tomorrow from three to six in the evening. And then of course, there's some other ones uh, going forward as well. So if that you want to support another another group and our troops here in uh, in the Waimea area and the Big Island, that's one way to support our Girl Scouts. And then lastly, uh, we did hold a, a vaping webinar uh, not too long ago, about a week or so ago now. And if you are interested in uh, watching that and learning about the impacts of vaping in our school communities, you can find that up on our WCA Facebook page or up on our YouTube channel. I'm grateful to join by. Uh, some uh, professionals um, and also our school school colleagues there in Wyoming Middle School. So please look for that if you're interested in learning about and the impacts on our school communities and our children and our youth, as well as the community as a whole. 
So that's a resource there for you to learn about and also some contacts within that video to uh, really learn about the impacts. Okay, so those are a few little community updates there and I'd like to pass it off next to our county council members. And maybe for this evening, we'll start it off with our district number one. So I'd like to welcome in uh, Councillor Heather Kimball to give us a couple updates from the county council. Welcome Councillor Kimball, thanks for joining us. Perfect timing, James. I literally just got my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much um, for the invitation, as always, to be on. And thank for you to um, all of the Waimea Community Association Board for all that you do. Um, there's two main things that I wanted to cover tonight. Um, the first being the YPO Valley closure. And then secondly, um, talk a little bit about our visit to Washington, DC. And that'll be a good time for me to transition over to Council Member Richards and he can share his take on that, um, that trip. So first of all, um, last week, the mayor issued on Friday, a emergency proclamation closing YPO Valley to all pedestrian traffic and um, all, most vehicular traffic except for YPO Valley residents, leases and farmers that are working down in the valley. And the reason for this is there was a geotechnical study that was initiated back in 2019. That geotechnical study was finally finalized in January of this year. And the study indicates that there is um, high potential for um, life, loss of life or injury um, on that road. And, and anybody who's been up and down that road um, knows that it is a um, in, in a pretty serious state of disrepair and it's, it's a dangerous road. And so the geotechnical study is available on um, the, the Department of Public Works um, website. And um, there's also a copy we had, there was a community meeting of stakeholders who live in the Valley held on uh, Wednesday last week. And that is available on my YouTube channel. So if you go to Hawaii County District One on YouTube, you will find that video. If you would like to see the presentation by Deputy Director um, Steve Pausey, who you guys I think have met before. Um, if you'd like to see his presentation on the findings of that geotechnical report, um, that's where you can find that presentation on, on YouTube. I will say that this decision is difficult and painful and no one wanted to make it. Um, however, at the front of it is protecting public health and safety and making sure that no one is injured or killed um, visiting the valley. And so the other portion of what Direct, Deputy Director Pausey presented was the game plan to do the repairs and mitigation on the road. And so um, the, the emergency order is a temporary closure and they're gonna get to work right away on doing the analysis on how we can repair that road and make it possible again that planning process, that analysis process is expected to take four to six months. And then beyond that, it's, it's really gonna depend on what the outcome of that is in terms of what the recommendations are. So we'll have a better time frame, um, probably in four to six months on, on when it will be reopened, but there is a commitment to do the repairs and to reopen it. Um, it just so happened as of last October, I've been working with, um, the Island of Hawaii Visitors Bureau on a more um, long-term planning process, a facilitated long-term process. And that was actually supposed to start next Friday. Um, it's still going to, this actually kind of threw a, a little bit of a kink into our plans, but we're gonna keep rolling with it. So in addition to this sort of technical planning and work that's happening with the Department of Public Works in the county, we are proceeding with this more long-term planning process to how we're, how we're gonna manage visitor um, visitors at the location and and balance all of the needs that are there in the community and around the island. I will say I, I really want to just reflect that I know that there's a lot of um, upset and, and people are concerned and, and worried about not that reopening and you know I just I just have to reiterate that this the bottom of this is protecting health and safety. That is what the decision is made on. I trust the deputy directors um, assessment and I, I just encourage everybody to, to follow the rules and, and um, hopefully we can get through this all together. So um, 
that, that's the first thing I wanted to cover. And then also um, on a more positive note, uh, Council Member Richards and I, along with two of our other colleagues were um, able to go to Washington DC um, in February for the National Association of Counties legislative meeting. Um, it was a it was a fantastic meeting. I, I keep saying it was like drinking from a fire hose. There was so much great information. And um, I think the big home take home message that, that I came home with is that we are in a position where we have a once in a lifetime opportunity for funding for infrastructure by through the bipartisan infrastructure bill. And um, you know, there's, there's opportunities for roadways, for bridges, for electrification, for broadband. Um, and it was very exciting. I was feeling very optimistic. Um, and I think the one, the other take, the take home message is, is that we really need to focus on building capacity. So it's, it's building capacity to go after those grants because a certain portion of the money will be formulaic and a certain portion will be competitive grants. We need to, to develop that grant writing capacity, the grant tracking capacity, and then ultimately all those engineers and builders and designers and technical savvy people that are gonna get the work done once we get those grants into the county. So I'm hoping, you know, there's a lot of folks here that are engaged in different organizations. Patty, I'm looking at you, you know, get these kids excited about developing themselves into these types of careers so that when we can, so that we can fully take advantage of this, this wonderful opportunity. Um, Council Member Richards and I had, did have the chance to meet with all four members of our congressional delegation and share with them all of our concerns about different infrastructure projects um, in Hawaii County. And um, we, we talked about roads and bridges and, and boat ramps and airports and things like that. And of course, uh, I always defer to Council Member Richards when it comes to talking about ad infrastructure. So I will leave it there and pass it to you and, and let you pick up the ball, Tim, if you want to talk about your experience there. Um, thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you, Councillor Kimball. Appreciate that. Councillor Richards, welcome. Thank you, and I appreciate it once again, um, like Councilman Kimball has said, uh, <clears throat> as always, thoroughly enjoyed the invitation to discuss things going on in and around the community. Um, and I will just, since she ended on the NACO conference, legislative conference in DC, I'll start with that. Uh, yes, we attended with two of our colleagues, and probably more than anything else, it's the building bridges, understanding the relationships, stepping forward. And we are in a very unique time for our county that uh, I think we are going to see the availability of funding to really take care of some of the things that are um, needing that, that TLC coming forth. Every time Councilwoman Kimball says bridges, I smile because she has all most of the bridges in her uh, district. I have the rest of them. And so, and we laugh about that, but all kidding aside, the funding for the bridges is there and potentially that could come to us if we are smart about putting together how we're gonna deal with that. The legislative conference was very interesting. And again, it developed the uh, relationships with other counties that have similar challenges that we have. Yes, we are an island in the middle of the Pacific. We're talking about a continental United States that have other concerns that um, may or may not affect us, but some of them are very parallel. One of the things that is coming out of Florida is legislation concerning the coral reefs. Hawaii has it. We are also facing that. And so um, I've been working with a, they call them commissioners there, uh, on some federal legislation to work with that. I also worked on a Waters of the United States. I'm a vice chair of water for the Energy Environment and Land Use Committee for the National Association of Counties. And we discussed the waters of the United States. President Biden did address us. And in his words, he said, you know, who knows better than the boots on the ground people there? President Biden started as a county councilman and he recognizes the value at the local level. And so again, this is a time for us to capitalize on these relationships and finding a way forward. Councilwoman Kimball is very right in the fact that we need the capacity to actually be able to write for these grants. And that's something that was a take home message that we worked on. Jumping off of that, and I'll, I'll jump onto the YPO conversation. 
Uh, this is something that Councilman Kimball and I have also been talking since she's been in office. Uh, YPO is a big concern. The safety of the road is a very big concern, but it's more than just the, the road. We have ongoing farmers and businesses down in the valley that we still have to help and attend to and figure out how we're going to do that. The unintended consequences when YPO gets shut down, and I raised this on the call, is we're going to see a spillover to the Polo side because people still want to, to hike. We're actually starting to see the problems on the rim of YPO Valley as well. And so these are areas that we have to attend to. We don't have any short answers yet, but we have raised the concerns and we'll be working forward on those. Uh, I'm being very mindful of my time, James, so I, I'm, I'm going forward here. Uh, one other thing that came up this week is the, the first draft of the budget for the County of Hawaii 2022-2023 is out, and that's at $689 million. It's a 13% increase over the $599 million of last year. I am the fiscal, I'm always counting the pennies, I'm always very mindful of what we spend, but this is going to be the year that we have to to invest in ourselves and go forward. You heard what Captain Evangelista was talking about the needs in the the um, far, the excuse me the police department. I've talked to Chief about this, and we definitely have to invest in our police department. There's a lot of things that we need to do. We're doing really well given the limited resources we have, but we can do better, and that's our job as a council is to seek that funding and see how we can improve what we need to improve on. And one of the things is help staff up our um, police department. There's gonna be a lot more conversation on the budget in the next two to three months. And so it's far too encompassing to discuss now, but stay tuned. If you have specific questions, please let us know. Um, <clears throat> also wanna talk about something that has been going on since I've been in office, and that's the Waikolo intersection. We received the traffic report from Belt Collins this last week. Finally got the report. And um, it's quite uh, precise. It is very detailed, and it brings a lot of information to the conversation. First of all, I want to start by saying we have the $5 million dollars available and that's been appropriated for that intersection. Rough numbers, and this is pre-pandemic, is about two and a half million dollars for a traffic light, three and a half million dollars for a traffic circle. I sought five million, we have five million secured because I didn't want to run out of money going forward. If, we, if you read the report and you can either look on the uh, Public Works website to find that report, or if you can't find it there, contact my office and we'll email you a copy. It is 100 pages, but only about the first 35 pages have the narrative in there. The last um, 60 pages are data. And if you want to dig through the data, there's a lot of data there. They've done a very good job. Long story short, the uh, traffic light or circle should be able to attend to the traffic needs for the first 10 years up to 2033. 2043, that's where things start to look like a traffic circle far more attend to our needs in the long run. It also pay, plays into whether or not we get the Dan Nokia Noy extension. And if we get a second access road into Waikoloa Village. Um, both of those, specifically Dan Nokia Noy extension, while we we're in DC, I did continue to talk to our federal legislative representation, the senators and talk about finding funding for the Daniel K. Illinois extension. It's about 110 to $120 million project. I see Harry's on the, on the um, program. He can probably sum up those numbers. So with that, I know I'm running out of time. There's never enough time to talk about all that we've got going on. But once again, always a pleasure to talk to the community. And any questions, please email my office or you can go on the social media and we'll get back to you. Thanks so much, everyone. And thanks, James. Thank you, Councilor Richards. And a mahalo to both of our counselors. Uh, we'd love to have you stick around if possible, um, because we'll probably come back to you with a couple of questions that relate to infrastructure as we kind of move on to our, our main topic here, uh, really. And uh, as we move forward, you know, with the buzz around Waka Bridge, uh, not to mention the traction and progress made towards other major intersections in neighboring communities, as Council Richard just alluded to and spoke on, we thought it best to dedicate some time this evening to discussing state highways, particularly here in Waimea and in the surrounding areas. Um, and as a community, not that long ago, we sat in on a number of meetings to discuss the safety of our roads here in town in Waimea, 
and we have since seen a change in even jurisdiction for our urban Waimea corridor. Uh, we wanted to learn more about the vision and plans for our growing community and how some of these crucial roadways and intersections can be made safer for our residents and all users of the road. Uh, we did intend to be joined by Hawaii Department of Transportation Deputy Director Ed Sniffen this evening. Unfortunately, Ed is unable to join us this evening. Um, earlier today, I learned that he was given a unique opportunity, an opportunity to meet with the United States Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. Uh, we know and we knew that uh, Deputy Director Sniffen would likely be calling in from D.C. this evening, Washington, D.C., but uh, this meeting and his happened to coincide at the same time. So nonetheless, we are grateful to be uh, represented. Uh, we're having we're grateful to have him representing us and our state as he connects with the top transportation lead in the country. So grateful for those opportunities there. Um, we still do intend to carry out this discussion and we are grateful to be joined by the next best HDOT representative for our communities. And this is uh, District Engineer Harry Takuye. Uh, Mr. Takuye is our top lead for Hawaii Department of Transportation here on Hawaii Island. Mahalo Harry for being flexible, uh, stepping into Ed's shoes this evening and updating our community on a number of key projects. Welcome, Harry. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, thank you, James, and thank you to the Waimea Community uh, Association, and thank you from um, state representatives and council people and the rest of the community. Uh, let me, I have a uh, slide for uh, Kauai Road uh, for Waiaka Bridge. Uh, you know, the title is uh, Call High Road Replacement of Waiaka Bridge and Realignment of the Approaches. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Hope. Okay. Can you folks see my screen? All good, Harry. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so this is again, this is a Kauai High Road replacement of Waiaka Bridge and replacement uh, realignment of approaches. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So the agenda here is, you know, here's the project location. Uh, we'll go over the purpose and need, uh, project consideration, build alter alternatives, um, industry environment findings and the project schedule. Okay, so this project is located near Waimea in the South Kohala district on the island of Hawaii. Waiaka Bridge is located along Kauai Road at a mile post 58.88 east of Kauai Road and Kohala Mountain Road intersection. State of, uh, State of Hawaii Department of Transportation is proposing to replace Waiaka Bridge and realign the roadway approaches to Kauai Road and Kohala Mountain Road intersection. The purposes of this project is to bring Waiaka Bridge up to its current standards for roadway width, load capacity, bridge railings, and bicycle and pedestrian access. Waiaka Bridge is inspected every two years, and this inspection shows that the existing bridge is structurally sound but eligible for replacement. The proposed project will provide a replacement for Waiaka Bridge in conformance with the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials design requirements. This project also presents an opportunity for Hawaii DOT to improve the alignment of the roadway approaches to the bridge and traffic operations for the nearby intersections of Kawahe Road with Kohala Mountain Road. Realignment of the existing approaches to this inter intersection will improve operations by increasing the line of sight distance. The current configuration of Kawahe Road and Kohala Mountain Road intersection can be confusing to motorists. The proposed realigned intersection will provide clearer direction, contributing to improved safety and traffic operations. Two intersection alternatives are being considered for this project as noted below, where alternative A, the proposed T intersection configuration would improve traffic operations by separating the eastbound and left turns from the left turning vehicles, which would reduce delay for all users. Alternate B, the proposed roundabout configuration will reduce the stop and go nature of an existing T intersection and improve operations to a continuous traffic flow. The roundabout configuration will also improve safety by reducing severity of crash occurrences from broadside to angle type crashes. The proposed project will require some disruptions to the surrounding area, including lane closures and elevated noise levels and potential air quality concerns due to the dust generated by the ground disturbing activities. The project team is committed to minimizing these impacts to the existing 
to an extent possible, including implementing and implementing the following measures, which would include like, providing temporary access during constructions for those traveling through the area, uh, minimizing any environmental impacts to the maximum extent possible, using the best management plan uh, practices. Uh, it will be implemented and coordinating with appropriate agencies. Uh, also minimizing acquisition of privately owned lands, including land needed for temporary bypass bridge, uh, minimizing project construction costs, uh, maintaining and accommodate access to businesses, schools, residents in the project vicinity during construction. Design the build alternative to accommodate bicyclists and pedestrians and be compliant with the regulations of the American with Disabilities Act. It is anticipated that horse riders will all you know, be using this pedestrian access to cross the bridge. Uh, bringing Waiaka Bridge up to conformance with Ashto design requirements includes a six foot wide sidewalk. Here we're looking at the existing conditions where high delay for left turn from Kohala Mountain Road to Kawahai Road. Confusing layout for motorists, also stop and go configuration. Site distance at the intersection would also be improved. Build alternatives. YDOT is also is evaluating two primary build alternatives for replacement bridge with configured alignment for the Kawaha Road and Kohala Mountain Road intersection. Alternate A is to replace the bridge with a T intersection. Alternate B is to replace it with a roundabout. So here it is for a T intersection. You know, approximate acquisition is like about 2,574 square feet. Uh, this one to, at one part of the TMK location, another part of the TMK is 7,623 square feet. And replacing it with a roundabout would require about 9,350 square feet. Uh, this is the proposed what they're looking at. Here is the project level of service. Basically, the level of service is a term used to, you know, to quantitatively describe operating conditions on a roadway where on a, on a A, which is the best, and F being the worst on, the, on a scale. So definitely, you at Kohala Mountain Road is on a southbound approach where we experience the greatest delays for the no-build alternative. The traffic, uh, the traffic signal and roundabout alternatives provide improved operating conditions for this approach where the Kauhai westbound approach is currently a free flowing movement. Uh, the traffic signal alternative will reduce operating conditions for this approach. A roundabout alternative provides the best operating conditions for all approaches. Here we look at alternative, uh, alternatives, pros and cons. So alternative A, like again, we're seeing was a T intersection pros that we can look at is improved traffic operations and lower delay compared to no build. It would be a smaller, put for, smaller footprint, uh, improved line of sight distance for oncoming traffic and traffic control familiarity with motors. Cons, however, is higher speeds due to free uh, traffic movements and a stop and go flow for turning movements. Alternative B, roundabout pros would be most improved traffic operations and lowest delay com uh, compared to T intersections and no build. Uh, also increased safety, lower speeds, fewer accidents, shorter crossing distance, collisions are not head on, uh, also provides continuous traffic flow. Cons, it's a larger footprint though, and lack of motors, familiarity with uh, road roundabout operations. Initial environmental findings, a biological survey was completed on October 22nd, 2020, and below is a summary of the preliminary findings. Uh, no threatened, endangered, or rare native animal species were found or encountered. Uh, no threatened, endangered, or rare native plant species were found. The birds that were observed were non-native. However, there were some standing water in the stream bed, which has the potential to attract native birds. Vegetation along Kauai High Road is mostly dry. The project site was mostly comprised of non-native alien plant species. The project is currently coordinating with various agencies, including the U.S. Fresh and Wildlife and the Department of Land and Natural Resources to ensure recognition and treatment of species. 
on July 28th of 2021, the uh, US Fish and Wildlife responded that there were 13 various species in the area and provided measures the project will implement to minimize potential impacts to these species. Archaeological fieldwork consists of visual inspections of the project area on October 14, 2020. The project area's condition was compared with the results of a 2020, uh, sorry, 2012 archaeological inventory survey report. The 2012 archaeological report remains generally accurate. Features of this uh, agricultural site are located entirely outside of the Kauai Roads right of way. The field ridge features dissipate five to six feet away from the fence at the edge of the road. This agricultural site is part of a larger resource. The concrete foundation is in a similar condition as reported in the 2012 uh, report. A new stream gauge has been installed on the foundation. This site is still recommended for no further work. No new archeological features or sites were observed. Archeological monitoring during construction is still recommended. Project schedule. The recommended alternative to be a part of the uh, draft environmental assessment, which is scheduled to be published on the environmental review uh, program website on March 23 of 2022. There'll be a 30 day public co uh, comment period associated with the publication of the draft EA and a public hearing be held on April 20, uh, 2022 for draft EA. Comments received will be documented and addressed as appropriate in the final EA. The final EA is scheduled to be published on an uh, ERP website on June 23, 2022. The proposed project is scheduled to be advertised for construction in February of 2023. Anticipating construction duration is about 18 months and with an estimated construction cost of about 10 million. Here's the project con contact information uh, for DOT. The project manager for this is uh, Mr. Andrew Hirano. Uh, and here's his contact information at andrewjhirano at hawaii.gov. Uh, also, you can go to the Hawaii Project uh, DOT website. And it's, as you can see, there's a uh, https uh, uh, forward slash h.hawaii.gov hawaii's waiaka bridge replacement um the design consultant it is is as w uh, wsp usp usa inc and uh consultant the contact is on uh, darren chin thank you thanks harry Wonderful, thank you, Harry. I mean, it's 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 early for the to hear us about Wacker Bridge and some of the details there, but we do appreciate you jumping on and really kind of guiding this conversation and uh, letting us know what is forthcoming. Uh, so it's really important for the community that you are here to hear about the project and what is being proposed. So we're grateful to have you on here and uh, and highlight that that project and what it will what it what it can bring for the community and also some of the impacts that we will see. Um, so thank you so much, Harry. Uh, also on the call this evening, uh, we are joined and grateful to be joined by Representative Tarnas, David Tarnas, to really further emphasize uh, some of these importance of the projects that are happening in the community, in particular the Waiaka Bridge, which we've seen here, as well as some of the other projects that we know are uh, forthcoming and have the potential to as well, uh, really to bring greater safety to the, our growing community. So mahalo and welcome Rep Tarnas, thanks for joining us. Thank you, James. And I want to say thank you to Harry Takayui. Uh, and uh, to Ed Sniffen, uh, Hawaii DOT Highways, and the whole team there. You know, we're moving forward on this project that we have been working on for decades, really. You know, there's been a couple of other attempts to improve Waiaka Bridge over the years. They've been stymied for one thing or another. Now, I think we got it right. We got it right. We got the right team to pull it forward. Harry is a great leader on our island as the district engineer for DOT highways. And so I really wanna say mahalo uh, to Harry for this uh, presentation tonight. Uh, my friends in the community, this is our project. This is something we've been waiting for so long. So please take a look when the uh, draft EA is released, please take a look at it, provide your comments. And then when the community meeting happens, please join us. We need to figure out uh, the right 
uh, answer for us, whether it's the T intersection or the roundabout. I have my preferences, but everyone wants, you know, the DOT wants to hear from you. Uh, and uh, let's figure out the right path forward and we'll make it happen. At the legislature, we've been working to make sure we provide the funds necessary to make this happen. And uh, the next job is to make sure that the community's voice is heard in the planning process and the design. And so if you have any questions, uh, as Harry Takiyui had said, there's people you can contact at DOT Highways. And if you need to contact me, please contact me at the, uh, at the Capitol, uh, you know, 586-8510 or at reptarnas at capital.hawaii.gov. I'm happy to hear from any of you because as I say, this is a project we've been trying to make happen for a long time. And now I think everything is in alignment and we're gonna make it happen. So uh, let's all work together to make this a success. I think that's all I have to say, James. I'll turn it back to you. And again, mahalo to Harry and the whole team at DOT Highways. Back to you, James. Thank you, Rep Tarnas. Mahalo to you as well. Uh, we'd actually like to take a little bit of time now to share some community questions and really dive further into Waiaka Bridge. And then we also may have some questions that relate to other state highways. And we're grateful to have uh, Mr. Chakuye on the call here to really answer those questions. Um, and Rep Tarnas, you're welcome to jump in as well. And both our council members, uh, from your expertise, we really value all of your minds and what you can bring to the table here and, and some of the ideas about these projects. Uh, what it really means for our community here, you know, Waimea in particular, but also how it impacts the larger Waimea area and also the districts surrounding. Uh, thank you to those that submitted questions ahead of time. We'll also try and capture some of the questions uh, as many as possible uh, from the Facebook chat here. And we do apologize if we're unable to answer every question, but we do have our elected leaders on the call that you're welcome to reach out to and inquire further about some of these projects. Um, so thank you. I just want to first of all thank uh, Patty and Riley, uh, Patty Cook, Riley Smith for taking the lead here and really posing these questions and I'm going to pass it over to you now. Thanks Riley, I'll, I'll pass it right over to you. All right, thank you James, appreciate it very much. Aloha Harry, hope you're doing well this evening. Thanks for uh, staying on. I notice it's getting a little dark in Hilo, but I appreciate you um, bearing with us here. You know, I just wanted to tag along in your presentation on um, Waiaka Bridge and I, when you were going through the different slides, it seemed to me that the roundabout alternative can be finished faster, is safer, and has better traffic movements for the motoring public. So the question I had is when I looked at your graphics, the uh, plan view of the, the presentation showing the roundabout, you know, since this is the primary truck access point from Kauai High Harbor through town, do the turning radiuses uh, address the 40 foot container uh, making that maneuver? Uh, maybe you can pull up that slide, Harry. It is about halfway through your presentation. That, that's the one. Mm -hmm. I'll need to get back to you on that, but I'm I'm sure that if that was being that is being considered in this uh, in the design. Okay, sounds good, Harry. And you know, I mean, I used to live off of Kauai High Road, and you know, on barge days, I mean, it's constant traffic. Either the full containers coming up the hill or the empty ones going back. So we just want to make sure it's safe for everybody. There's a school, you know, Hawaii Preparatory Academy is right there too. So, um, and there's a lot of traffic at the transfer station road. That's the base yard for your offices, Helco, as well as the county solid waste division. So we just wanna make sure it's it's safe for everybody. So thank you very much. Um, Patty and I are gonna tag team. So I'll let Patty pick the next question, Patty. Thank you very much. And thank you, Harry, for being with us this evening and for this presentation. Um, not, not only do we have trucks going to this intersection, but we also have very large buses. And so we just ask that that would also be taken into consideration because there are um, buses across that bridge. Um, I did have a question or a suggestion, knowing that you're gonna be coming up on a public meeting in a few 
about maybe two months after the EA is published. Um, we'd be very willing to help you with that. It's a, more of an offer. I'm not asking um, that you make a commitment, but rather making an offer to assist you in engaging community in that conversation and particularly including the truckers of our community um, who are very interested in this um, and very concerned because of some, some issues that have raised in the past with limits on tonnage on the bridge. Thank you. Thank you. Should we go on or what would you suggest? Should we go on? Hey, yeah, thanks, Patty. Yeah, if you want to uh, field another question, Riley, do you have another question you want to throw out here? Sure, uh, Harry, this is a quick one. So. Um, a number of years back, uh, James Glover was doing resurfacing on Kauai High Road. And I think they took the coal plane material and um, stockpiled it on the corner of the intersection of Kauai High Road and Queen Pahomono Highway on the north side. And, you know, it's a fairly tight radius turn. There's a lot of trucks trying to accelerate going up the hill. Folks coming down from Waimea trying to make a left onto Queen Pahomono Highway. So I'm just wondering if uh, DOT has any plans to maybe remove that stockpile of the cone plane material to increase, increase the site distance at that intersection. Um, yes, we're looking into that. We're working with um, other agencies uh, to see if they are uh, government agencies to get that, uh, to accept that material. Okay. And, and Harry, just to give you some feedback, one of our board members um, is involved with the State Department of Agriculture. And I know they have uses for that material on some of their uh, access roads to the um, water line intakes in the Koala Mountains. So there is a need for that material. So they, they would be more than welcome to accept yeah. it from you folks. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. Not me. Shoot. No, Patty. Thank you. I think I'm having some um, video problems, but that's fine. Um, Harry, could we ask you going back to Waiaka? to talk a bit about how traffic will move through that intersection during construction. Uh, you mentioned temporary bridge. Yes, there'll be a temporary bypass road and a bridge to maintain the existing uh, traffic during the project construction. Uh, the temporary bridge and the road will be um, installed and used during the construction of the existing bridge replacement. Uh, and so therefore, you know, this will temporary bridge accommodate, you know, vehicles along with, you know, shared areas for pedestrians and bicyclists and even horseback riders. And that's what they're looking at. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right, uh, Harry, I got the next question. So, um, you know, recently there was a transition in ownership. Um, so the main roadway through Waimea is now under state jurisdiction, including Mamloho Highway, as well as Lindsay Road and Kauai High Road. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm sure you're probably aware, but uh, we do have an annual parade in Waimea, and it's pretty well attended by a lot of people from throughout the island, and we typically close down uh, Mamlaho Highway and the intersection at Lindsay Road for sometimes up to an hour, and it's a big community event, and so I just wanted to double check with you on the permitting requirements that our committee will you have to go through in order to obtain a permit to have this event in our community that's probably on its 50th plus year and to ask for your cooperation in supporting that event. Sure, yes, um, we can come to our permitting department. Right now, um, I would have to double check and get back with our department because due to COVID and stuff, we did suspend those type of um, activities at this time. But I mean, with everything being released, I would have to go about check and uh, you know along with the whole state that we're if we're going to start allowing these type of uh, activities you know i just figured with the governor's um easing of the COVID protocols on march 26 that by christmas of next year we should be figured out as long as we don't have another spike and it'll thank be you. Sorry, permitting department for that cool thank you patty uh -huh. but related to the parade harry <clears throat> chances are pretty good we might change the parade route not doing what we did this year because that was wonderful because we had an event but it was not crazy but there will probably be a change in the route for the parade so maybe that's a conversation we need to have with your folks early so they know what we're thinking about um, I was hoping we could 
shift gears and look at what I think is now being called the Waimea Roadway Improvements Project. And that's really Kauai High Road to Lindsay Road to the main intersection. And that's the project that we had, I think something in the neighborhood of seven Pell meetings over the course of a, almost a year and a half with, um, this is pre-pandemic. And then um, <clears throat> funding was provided by the legislature using um, a special fee on rent-a-cars. And then that didn't produce revenue as fast as was expected because of pandemic. Could you tell us a little bit about the status of that project? It's something that I think hasn't been on the radar as long as Waiaka Bridge, but it's very high, pro, high profile and priority for the community. Thank you. Yeah, the DOT has determined that, um, you know, which is called, you know, the project, the Waimea Roadway Improvement Project, that would be funded by the uh, rental surcharge. Uh, the town improvements could be, um, DOT has determined that, you know, these town improvements could, improvements could be started within, you know, two years, uh, provide benefit uh, relatively quicker at a low, Cost, you know, about, about 15 to 18 million dollars. Uh, this project is called, uh, like again, I said, the Roadway, uh, Waimea Roadway Improvement Project, which uh, has a draft EA that was published last year. And, um, and the FEA is planned to be published in the fall of uh, this year. Again, it will be using rental surcharge con uh, funds to reduce the time for delivery. And uh, this project does not, you know, any affect the mini. Uh, Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Looking at something. Tarnas, did you want to jump in on that one too? Go ahead. Rep Tarnas, did you want to jump in on that one? Only saying that yes, the legislature appropriated. The legislature did appropriate funds for these improvements, and uh, the legislature uh, has prioritized uh, these improvements through town. And I'm grateful that DOT Highways is going to move forward with them. Uh, we're starting to see more visitors come and rent cars, so we're starting to get some more income into the rental car surcharge uh, fund to finance these bonds. And so uh, I, I do prioritize these uh, projects going forward. And thank you, Harry, for identifying them as something that you know would be a beneficial thing to do, uh, and and that the DOT is committed to moving forward with them. Thank you. Yeah. I was told today that. Um, there will be a final EA relatively soon yes. on that a... project that there's some work being done on archaeological site. But if there's anything again that we can do to help su express support for that project, keep it on track and moving along, it's, um, it's definitely a priority. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Patty and uh, David. Um, uh, so Riley, could I just, uh, if, if Harry could let us know and let the community know, when do you expect the um, draft DA to come out on those improvements? Because I think the community really wants to get engaged and express their support. Do you have a, a sense as to when that might be uh, released? On my notes here, I said the Waimea draft improvement projects, uh, the draft EA was published last year. So that's already been out and people have commented on it. So what's what's the next step? And is the does the community have any uh, right. next uh, step to improve, uh, you know, to express their support? Um, I need to get back on that. But the final, okay, so, final EA is planned uh, for the fall of this year, though. OK, so the draft EA's already been out. People have commented on it. I remember that. Uh, final EA is expected later this year, and so uh, if everything goes right, we should be able to move forward with this project, yeah? Yeah, they're looking at um, non improvements could be started within two years, it's estimated. Okay, so but we'll be hopeful for uh, 2023. <laughs> That's Thanks really great news. I'm an optimistic guy. <laughs> All right, thank you, David. Um, Harry, I'll jump in on the next question. So I know that there was a lot of discussion about the DKI extension, uh, Daniel K. Noy extension from its terminus, existing terminus at Mamloha Highway 190 down to the Waikolo Resort intersection. And I believe 
uh, some of the pause on that was due to rental income funding that did not uh, occur because of COVID. Uh, as a regular commuter, my day job's in Kona and I live in Waimea. So I am on a regular basis driving that road and I see how much traffic is on um, Daniel K. Noy Highway. So I'm just wondering if there's any opportunities to resurrect that project with the COVID restrictions being raised and hopefully the rental car income increasing again? Well, uh, right now, currently, we do not have sufficient funds for a project at that cost. Uh, project has been deferred. Um, the project is still on Hawaii Island's capacity project listing, and they're looking for funding opportunities for this project right now. Okay, thank you, I appreciate the update. That's an important project, I think, for the entire community, because. Potentially, if that road goes in, it takes a lot of traffic off Kauai High Road and the Waiaka Bridge construction. Thank you. Uh, James and Riley, if I could just speak up for a moment on that. It's a very important project for us. And uh, rental car surcharge is not up to the level that it can finance it on our own. We are trying to pursue uh, federal funding to help uh, pay for more of it. Um, but it's, it's a real challenge. Uh, but I just got to say to our community members, we've got to continue to support this project moving forward as a priority. Uh, and it's something that will help us a great deal. Uh, Waikoloa Road is getting overused by traffic. Um, we need a better route. And so that saddle road extension is really important for regional uh, traffic safety. And so we don't have an answer yet to funding, but we have to continue our advocacy for it. Um, so thanks very much, uh, Riley. Thank you, Harry, and back to you, James. Thanks, Rep. Tarnas. Thank you. Patty, did you have another question? Yeah, actually, since we're putting things on your to-do list, there's another one. It has to do with really looking closely at Lindsay Bridge the Lindsay Road Bridge, and understanding that it is structurally sound, but whether or not there really needs to be an assessment, a needs assessment looking at that, um, that that is not part of the, um, the project that's um, the, way, the one we talked about earlier, Waimea Roadway Improvements do not include any work on Lindsay Bridge. So if we could have that on your short list, <laughs> getting the kind of long list, um, that would be great. Thanks, Patty. That was really about Lindsay Road Bridge and there are potential you you know, connectivity more, issues. Riley. Hey, Riley, did you have another, another one with that one? We'll go with uh, one more from Riley. Sure, thanks, James. So uh, Harry, just to tag team on to what Patty just talked about the Lindsay Road Bridge, now that it's under, you know, your kuleana. So I'm pretty sure you're aware of the concerns with the structural stability. And during a period of time, maybe 10 years ago, the county, when they owned it, was very concerned. You know, there's um, concrete jacks that are under there to kind of help support it. But again, you know, anything that's a connector road, a direct connection between the harbor, the port at Kauai High and the port at Hilo and the Hamakua Coast, is a critical vital link to all of the supplies that um, provide uh, commerce for all of our residents. So, uh, you know, definitely if you look at that route and any bridge along that route, it's probably just as critical as Koli Koli and some of the other uh, responsibilities you have. So, uh, you know, James also in his other day job, his high paid job, he's the uh, chair of the South Kuala Traffic Safety Committee. So I'm sure that he's um, a good resource to continually provide more information. So I just want to reiterate how important that bridge is. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Riley. Um, Harry, did you want to add anything else at the end here? Would you like to say anything else? Uh, no, just uh, thank you. Okay. We, we appreciate you taking these hard questions, that's for sure. And there's a long, long laundry list of projects, of course, and we know a lot of these are, are capacity projects and they aren't quite, we're not quite ready for them uh, financially, but um, they are key aspects of the community that can help uh, with the overall safety, uh, if that's a concern as well. And we do really appreciate you being on this call to take some of those, those tough questions. And I, I was going to jump to some of the, our council members, but thank you, Councillor Kimball, for tackling those questions 
uh, about YPO Bridge. There were questions about uh, recreation users that use uh, YPO Beach. Um, so thank you for answering that question there. And I, I, I apologize, but we're not able to get to everyone's question this evening. We have um, many other questions that I know that Patty and Riley have as well. And thanks Riley for, for plugging the South Carolina Traffic Safety Committee uh, uh, as, that, as that function as well. Um, but I first wanna thank Harry and I think I wanna thank Rep Tarnas for, for being on this call and really supporting these projects and really taking the time and energy uh, to be here with us and, and focus on these projects for, for the overall safety of our community. So thank you so much. And uh, we really appreciate your leadership and for being here this evening. Um, and really to jump off of what Riley was saying, if, if you are interested, and I, I apologize, we weren't able to get to all your questions, but if you are interested in learning about any of these particular projects and infrastructure projects in particular, or even some of the county endeavors, we didn't really go into that effect. And Councilor Richards did talk about the Waikoloa intersection, uh, but there are other projects as well. And I know there were, there are the road swap things and things like that happening and it changes the jurisdiction of the roadways. Uh, you are welcome to participate in, an, in another regular, regular uh, community meeting that focuses uh, its time on this type of work. Um, the South Carolina Traffic Safety Committee meets monthly to hear and discuss about road safety, upcoming projects. Uh, meetings are held on the second Tuesday of each month. And to, if you would be interested to receive information or even join these meetings, you can send an inquiry to SKTSC secretary, so South Carolina Traffic Safety Committee secretaries, that's SKTSC secretary at gmail.com. The committee is grateful to be joined by our elected leaders, uh, both from the county and the state, as well as grateful to be joined by Mr. Takuye and his counterparts at the county level. Uh, Councilor Kimball did talk about Deputy, Deputy Director Steve Pousey, he joins us regularly as well. So those meetings can get lively and we talk about all those different infrastructure projects. So thank you so much, Harry, for, for joining those as well and, and being a part of the community there. Um, before we wrap up the tonight's meeting, uh, I just wanted to touch briefly, and I, I won't go too far into it, uh, but wanted to share some of the results of the recent county redistricting effort and really how this looks for the Waimea community. Uh, the state elections office, state office of elections has initiated the process for candidates to begin filing paperwork for a really only a select number of seats. This is another big election year um, with almost, almost all of the seats open with the finalization of the state reapportionment process. However, the state reapportionment side, so there's a redistricting reapportionment, reapportionments at the kind of the state level, that plan and those maps have not really been finalized. There's still some work to do. Um, currently only the seats for the US Senator, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, uh, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, and of course, our Hawaii County Council are open to file for. Uh, that filing period began just this past Tuesday and will continue uh, through June 7th. Um, our state primary election will be held on Saturday, August 13th. And as you are familiar with, we'll continue to have mail-in ballots. And there is also that option to visit voter service centers for assistance with your ballot, to drop off your ballot, and even if you'd like to vote in person at those voter service centers. Um, it is pretty, a, quite a regular thing for the Waimea Community Association to uh, say adieu to our elected officials during this period of time. Um, we, we unfortunately, we like to hear from our elected leaders. Uh, unfortunately, as people do file, we uh, like to give a little space between that period of time and our regular uh, candidate forums. So we will be putting kind of a pause on that unless there isn't really any filing uh, challenges there. Um, so, I, so with the state maps are still being finalized, I, the, you know, the Hawaii County redistrict effort did conclude at the end of 2021. I just wanted to show you real quickly here what that map looked like, the produced map for our community um, and some of the surrounding areas. You are welcome to go and look at this a little further and really get a better understanding of what it looks like for Hawaii Island and the districts from that process and other areas. So let me just bring that up quickly here. I don't wanna to take too much time here, but I just wanted to showcase just a little bit. So this map here was a, a product of, 
um, the redistricting effort. And I'll really only focus on kind of the boundaries of Council 1 and Council 9 and Council 8 as well. Uh, this map, this kind of platform allows you to see what is, the, what is the current one, what we currently are living with, and then what the redistricting plan has changed to at the council level. This is talking only about the county council. So there was a change here. I'll start here down on the south side of the district, and it created more of a, 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 a uniform division between districts nine and eight. And it did include some of the, uh, not there weren't a lot of rep, uh, residents living in this area, but it did bring them back into uh, the Waikoloa Beach area. As you can see, I can go flip back and forth between what it is currently and then what it will be now going forward. So this is what it was. And then bringing some of those residents back into uh, their associated uh, neighborhoods and communities. Uh, there were a couple changes on the Waimea side, uh, being in the sense that Council District 1, the Hamakua District primarily, was short of residents. And really the goal is to try and obtain and attain the closest level of representation as possible, given some parameters. Uh, so there was a change here on the on kind of on the east side of town between the districts. And you know we're grateful to be represented by two council members. It really gives us um, you know, multiple voices at our county legislative body. So this is what it will be going forward. And there were some changes here, uh, primarily on the Kohala side of the highway. Um, this is somewhat to do with some of the count, the census blocks that were changed in that area. So some of the Pu'unani subdivision has shifted over into the Hamakua district. And you're welcome to revisit this and look at this some more, and I encourage you to do so, so you familiarize yourself with this as we go into the election process. So I just wanted to share that. Otherwise, the district has uh, shifted only ever so slightly around the edges, but just wanted to share that with everyone there. And we look forward to kind of learning more about the state reapportionment process too, and to see how that unfolds. Um, and really wanted to bring this up because this uh, leads into what the Waimea Community Association is planning to do for our candidate forums. And much like we did two years ago now, uh, we are planning to kick, kick things off with the gubernatorial candidates. And we may need to identify maybe another evening, depending on how many candidates do file. But at this point, we are scheduled to hold a virtual forum on Thursday, June 9th for our gubernatorial candidates with the LG candidates the following week on Thursday, June 16th. Uh, we also plan to hold uh, candidate forums for our county council candidates and our state senate candidates and our house rep candidates uh, for this affected area in Waimea area during the month of July. Uh, those forums will be held on July 7th and July 14th. And we have just begun the process of connecting with and reaching out to the candidates so if you are a candidate and we haven't, been in, we haven't been in touch with you, please expect a call from us. But if you do work uh, with a particular campaign, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to us as well. Uh, we do look forward to working with the candidates and helping to present them to our community members and really learn about them and their goals for those elected seats. And we hope that all of you, our viewers, can really join us in on those calls and those for those events. So I just wanted to share a little bit of that looking forward. So thank you so much. Thanks for letting me share that. And you know, grateful to have everyone on the call this evening. We learned a lot of new information um, and some things to look forward to. And really before we close tonight's meeting, I just want to say last few words here. Uh, first of all, mahalo nui to all of our presenters for joining us, really taking the time to update our viewers and our community and really helping to lead uh, these efforts and really take a lot of these things into consideration for the safety and well-being of our community from many different avenues and aspects from our community gardens to our highways and safety to um, infrastructure projects, as well as being those advocates for our community in the state ledge and the county council, and of course, on your uh, adventures and journeys to Washington, DC. So um, we look forward to hearing more about that and, and the process and looking forward to the work you're doing. So thank you all to the viewers for joining us on tonight's live stream. Uh, once again, you're always welcome to visit and rewatch this recording up on the WCA Facebook page or up on the WCA YouTube channel. And on behalf of the Waimea Community Association Board, I wish you all good health, be well, aloha. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good night.